You are welcome. You may be seated. Honorable Luke, let me warn you that there's sometimes an inherent danger in having some of your people come and observe plenary. Because amongst those 31 there, you might have a potential one that, that is eyeing that seat that you are sitting on. <laughs> Just to let you know. Announcement of installation as the Joker Jean Katsina. This is from Honorable Ashiru Mani. I humbly write to inform all the members of the Green Chambers that my turbanning ceremony as the Doka Jean Katsina conferred on my person by His Royal Highness, the Emir of Katsina and Chairman Katsina State Council of Chiefs, Olaji Abdumuni Kabir Usman, CFR, is scheduled to take place on Saturday, the 28th of November, 2020, at the Emir's Palace, Katsina, by 10 a.m. Signed, Honorable Aminu Ashiru Mani. Honourable colleagues, we also have with us today in the gallery members of the Noble Peace Club worldwide to witness the assumption of office of their member as the Clerk of House of Representatives in person of Chinedu Akubweze. You're welcome to the, to the house. Can you rise up for recognition? Are you here? Okay. You're welcome. public petition. It seems like the system is still out for whatever reason. Yeah, we'll go on in the meantime. Any public petition, please? Just go ahead. Speaker, honorable colleagues, let me first of all welcome all of us back, sir. My name is Honorable Haruna Isadede, and I represent Karai Logo Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker. I'm from Kano State. Mr. Speaker, I have 10 petitions to present. They accumulated over time because of the break. How many? 10, sir. The, the first can you just read the title and of all ten, don't even go into the details at this point. That is what exactly yeah, because that's, that's too many petitions in one day from one person. Go ahead. Yes, sir. One is um, against PTAD. The second is against the IDP. The third, Mr. Speaker, is against the SEC. Security and Access Commission. The fourth is against the Nigeria Postal Service, NIPO. The fifth is against the Central Bank of Nigeria. The seventh is against the Nigeria Police Force also. The sixth, Mr. Speaker, is against also the Central Bank. The seventh is against the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund. And the last, sir, is against a company in the name of Naval Building and Construction Nigeria Limited. Mr. Speaker, I seek your leave and the leave of the House to leave all of them. Yes, please, you may lay the petitions. 
Any other petition? Your mic. Now go back to your seat. Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues, Mohammed Omar Bia is my name. I represent the people of Barakina and Kaima Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Paris State. Mr. Speaker, I have three petitions here. One is about fraud, intimidation, and threat by a military officer. The second is about the version of fund by MTN. The third is about evasion of fund by all companies. Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues, by your kind permission, may I be allowed to lay the petitions? Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Any other petition? Are we done with petitions? <laughs> Who's there? Prince Ariel. Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable members, my name is Honorable Akim Adini Adeyemi. I represent the good people of Afidua Tiba, Oyo East, Oyo West, I'm from Oyo State. I have a petition from one of my constituents, Mr. Adeniki Teslim, who you do know. His petition is on unjust, premature, and unfair retirement from the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR. Mr. Speaker, may I seek your indulgence and leverage to lay this petition? Unjust? <laughs> Retirement and premature retirement from the Department of the Petroleum Resources. He doesn't want to go to court. Yeah, I think the House can do can get him justice. All right, you may lay your petition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Black one. No, no, Mr. It's the one. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mm. I, before me, I'm Samuel Tinedo Mwaso, representing Okanot and South Federal Constituency. I'm from Anambra State. Mr. Speaker, I have three petitions, all against the Nigerian police. May I have your permission to play it, Mr. Speaker? Thank you. Please go ahead. Any other petition? Can we move on? All petitions refer to the Committee on Public Petition. Honorable Mduri Elumilu, Minority Leader, what's your point of order? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Honorable Dodi Godwin Elbelu, and I represent the good people of Anyocho Shimilifera Constituency. I'm from Delta State. Mr. Speaker, my point of order is on matter of urgent national importance, Order 8, Rule 4, which I also want us to dwell on uh, Order 8, Rule 4, and 7, if the House accepts. The matter is about diplomatic postings and racketeering that is going on in the foreign missions. 
what we have noticed, there are complaints about those that have been posted and those recalled, still receiving, those recalled are still receiving allowances, housing allowance, uh, maintenance allowance, transport allowance, medical and utility bill allowances. And these things are running into millions of dollars. This period that we are looking for money to even finance our budget, I feel that there is need for us to put a stop to it, ask foreign affairs to investigate it, and stop, put a stop to what is doing, going on now in all the foreign missions. Okay. Any second? Honorable Luke, can you second? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. On of your Luke, I represent the people of Etina and Nsetibum, Surubium, Federal Constituency of Akwa Ibom State. I rise to second the motion ably moved by the minority leader, sir. Minority leader, please move your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, my name is Honorable Dudi Godwin Delimelu, and I represent the good people of Anyocho Shumili Federal Constituency and from Delta State. In season, my practice associated with diplomatic postings and deliberate draining of resources in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, a call for investigation. The House notes that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is the statutory body saddled with the responsibilities of implementing foreign decisions and handling the external promotion of Nigerian domestic vision and ideas, as well as increasing awareness about Nigerian economic potentials. The House further notes that these responsibilities are carried out through Nigerian diplomats posted to various foreign missions and international organizations to represent and protect the interests of Nigeria. The House is aware that there are serious allegations of massive flinching to the tune of millions of dollars by some erring officials of the ministry through deliberate defiance of recall orders. The House is further aware that it's been alleged that these officials, one year after their recall to headquarters, are still receiving full entitlement, such as accommodation allowance, house allowance, transport allowance, medical and utility bills, even though they have been officially posted back to Nigeria. Concern, the House is concerned that these alleged corrupt practices is said to be aided by staff of the Human Resources Department of the Ministry who collect sums of money from these erring officials and internationally frustrate efforts of posted colleagues to replace those posted back to headquarters by refusing to protect the needed documentation that will enable them to resume duty at the various foreign missions. The House is further concerned that while these officials are busy fleecing the Ministry of, ministry of millions of dollars monthly, the Ministry is said to have no functional clinic, no generators, no functional air conditioning system, and no inter internet access, making the environment unconducive for staff to perform at optimal level. The House is therefore worried that if these corrupt practices and consistent disregard for constituted authority by staff of the ministry is not put to check, it may paint Nigeria in a bad image before the international community and ridicule the fight against corruption by Mr. President, hence the need for an urgent investigation. The House therefore resolved that the House mandates its Committee on Foreign Affairs to investigate these allegations and report back within four weeks. I so move this as well. Um, Dr. Archibald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Dr. Henry Okon Archibong. I speak for the people of the two. Federal constituency in Akwaibom State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion as moved by the minority leader of the House. I shall support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
My name is Judah. Do you want to add some flesh or is it sufficient to your motion? Because uh, it's an alleged issue and we are calling for investigation, I feel that we should allow the committee to do their job and report back to the House. Okay. Yes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the Chairman of Foreign Affairs has briefed me on this, so we'll just put a question. Uh, those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say no. Aye, Zavid. Honorable Dati. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, uh, my name is Honorable Garba Dati Muhammad. I represent Sabam the Referendum Conspiracy of Kaduna State. Uh, matter of urgent public importance that I come under Order 8, Rule 4. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this matter is urgent need to address the security threat caused by the phenomenon of banditry, particularly kidnapping and abduction, to the campuses of Ahmed Bele University, Zaria, and other tertiary institutions across the nation. So, Mr. Speaker... Okay. Yes, let's get a second there for that. Yeah, and the second leg of the motion is to allow it to take place today as it is so hard. Thank you. Mr. Can you second the first and the second legs of the motion? Okay. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. My highly respected colleagues, I'm Honorable Aisha to the group the full member the full member representing the Kunafa Federal Constituency and from the member state. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion heavily moved by on the Budetti that the motion is very important and we should allow him to take it now. I shall second.
wife and daughter, and only after an exchange of fire with the police intelligence response team, did the body release the wife and daughter while they escaped with the professor. And we are anxious that Professor Billy remains in captivity with the bandit as of this moment when the invasions are continuing unabated. Note that the bandits have been substantially aided in their wicked, despicable, and nefarious activities by the absence of a world offense around the Sanford campus of the university, unlike what, obtainable, what is obtainable at the campus of the University of Meduguri and the University of Abu Dhabi campus. Further notes that the bandit have also been substantially aided by the fact that it shares borders with Southern Katsina, particularly Sabwa local government, uh, where the activities of the, the bandits have escalated in geometric proportions, as well as Kuyello in Benungwari local government area, another hotspot of criminalities, and that the forests in these border locations have become heavens for these criminal activities. Concerned that these border locations have made it easier for the bandits to penetrate forest borders of the campus while making staff and students easy prey. Worried that the sad consequence of this state of affairs is that the university now stands in the serious risk of being unable to promise the serene and conducive atmosphere that is self known for its purpose and institution of higher learning. Cognizant that the university is a community that houses over 60,000 uh, staff and students with origin spread across the 36 states of the Federation and further capital territory. Equally cognizant that no other tertiary institution in Nigeria is as representative of the diverse peoples and culture of our nation as the Abadivale University. Mindful, therefore, that this emergency has become a national emergency that touches on every Nigeria and that the overriding need to protect this heritage cannot be. Overstated. Resolve to call on the federal government to urgently and without further delay erect a secure wall around the campuses of Ahmadu Bele University Zaria, as this has been done for the University of Meduguri and the University of Abu Dhabi campus, in order to foster incursions from the bandits and other misperians. B. Call on the Inspector General of Police to urgently and without further delay establish a unit of its mobile police personnel at the institution, particularly at the phase two segment of Samaru campus, to ensure security of life and property at all times. C. Call on the Chief of Army Staff to urgently and without further delay establish a battalion of the Nigerian Army at the southern border of the University to help for still incursions into the campus from that end, which has attained a certain authority in this regard, and finally mandate the House Committees on Tertiary Education, National Security and Intelligence uh, to liaise with the Ministry of Education, the Chief of Army Staff, and Inspector General of Police, and other relevant agencies of government to implement the above resolution and report to the House of Interviews. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I will order with three seconds, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and many colleagues. I am Deputy Minister of Justice. I represent the group people of civil and government and fellow prosecutors. I rise to support the motion to be moved by my board. I still support it. That's straightforward. Do we put a question? Or you, do you want to a minute? Okay. Even though the, the motion is self explanatory and very straightforward, uh, it's not that we are just particular about students and staff, we are particular about all Nigerians that are involved. But this dangerous trend that is coming in into Amadou University. Even the University of Meduguri, that is the epicenter, and Meduguri is the epicenter of Boko Haram, even with that, there was never a case of kidnapping, even worse. But this trend of ABU, kidnapping staff every day, uh, is becoming alarming and worrisome. So it's for this.
this reason, we move this motion, Mr. Speaker, uh, so that uh, the government can intervene. As we said in the motion, ABU is one of the most cosmopolitan industries because of its liberal admission policy. Almost no part of Nigeria that is not represented. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Dati. I'll put a question. Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it. Honorable members, the first business of the day is a motion on admittance into the chambers of the immediate family, members of, of the member, uh, family members of the outgoing clerk, House of Representatives, for the purpose of a valedictory session in his honor, standing in the name of Honorable Garba Al Hassan Adobowa, the House Leader. Leader is invited to move the motion. And also the, the CNA also wants to come in, so you can include him in the... Hmm? Of course, he's not a stranger. CNA is not a stranger, so the family members, yeah. invite them in. He will never be a stranger to this. Amen. Uh, right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, Alassane Ado Dogwa is my name. Mr. Speaker, I represent the good people of Dogwa, Tudumada Federal Constituency. Honorable Members, I'm from Kano State. Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning to move that the House motion to Order 19 8, 1, and 4 of the standing orders to admit into the great chamber of the House of Representatives the immediate family members of the outgoing clerk of the House of Representatives for the purpose of a valedictory session in his honor. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, I so move. Honorable Blessing, Honorable, can you send them, please?
session for the outgoing clerk, Mr. Patrick Gila, who will be sitting for the last day in the House of Representatives as he goes on to his retirement. several years of meritorious service. I will now call on um, the leader of the house, to give his um, validity speech for four minutes in honor of Patrick Ahonka Igiwa.
will miss Giwa. I repeat, we will miss Giwa three times. I'm saying so because not only because of his intellectual capacity and contributions as a clerk of the House of Representatives. I want to say, without any fear of contradiction, and the CNS is there, that if not for anything, I have been on the floor of this House as far back as 1992. And to date, Mr. Speaker, I want anyone to God that 
today has been set aside, even when, even before he was born, that there will be a time, a child will be born to a family of Giwa. And that child will grow through nurture to become a man. And be trained educationally and also have the opportunity to work and exhibit all that he had learned through nurture. Today, we we'll talk about a man who is humble to a fault. I said it yesterday night that our clerk, Sir Patrick Diwa, is humble to a fault. Meeting him, I thought he would have somebody at home who probably will be an opposite of him. Because if one is cold, the other one may be a little bit hot. And giving Beijing the description that women should be heard. But unfortunately, I was wrong. The wife turned out to be even worse than him on the issue of humility. The humble wife to a fault, and him also extremely humble. Giwa is somebody that when you meet him, probably, let me use what happens on the floor, probably there is no other paper. And you are eager to raise a part of other, other privileges. And you beckon on him. He is quick to apologize. He is quick to leave whatever he is doing not minding the fact that you may call him to live here, to go and search for that other papa and ensure that that person, that member that has complained is satisfied. It takes a man that is humble to, be, to do that. And that is him. Dua is a man full of integrity. I don't say because he's sitting in front of us. I say because that is what I know about him. I've had cause to meet him behind, especially when there are pressure from my opposition members, that their names are probably not listed in one other committee or the other. And I try to persuade him to think out with the list before it comes out. Say that again. And, and he will tell me, Minority Leader, please, talk to Mr. Speaker. He will tell me, please, talk to Mr. Speaker. I've also had cause of recent, of recent, where somebody uses his name that one of the members offices was locked and i asked him i called him and i said this is unlike you they said you authorized it say who he swore that he never did that when i got back to the sergeant and person he turned out that he was he was saying the truth he never directed that it takes a man that is full of integrity to be upright and be able to stand by what he says. The man, Giwa, if you check his account, I'm not sure he has the money that a retiring person should have. Why? Because he chose to stand by his name, not after money. I never heard that our clerk was involved in one contract or the other or fighting with the admin or account department because of insufficient funds.
You are telling me random. You mark it. So, Mr. Speaker, Giwa is a man that I'm very, very, very proud of. I'm proud to be associated with him. I'm proud to call him a Niger Delta son. I'm proud to stand bold to say that he came, he saw, and he was able to conquer every spirit of manipulation. He conquered it. He made sure that those things of life, things of material things, never affected him on this floor. And that is why I pray and I ask God that God will give him long life. And not only giving him long life, but in good health. And he must have peace of mind in addition to that. Madam, don't be threatened. Nobody will take your position. Our clerk, Patrick Giwa, is a principled man. He believes in one man, one wife. He will never, he will never, never, never betray the love he has for you. And as a good Christian, and as a knight, he can't deviate from what he believes in. God has so made two of you. And at the appointed time, he will take two of you. But not now. It's when you have done other jobs. Not only this. I told him this night. I said, your kind of man should be made national commissioner in INEC. Because it does not belong to any political party. And is a detribalized Nigerian. So I wish you well. I wish you well. And I pray that God will compensate you for all that you have done for Nigeria. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Leader. We'll, we'll just take a couple more. Uh, Honorable Luke, you are, you are a first-time member, but I have seen your interaction with the clerk, and it tells a lot that a first-time member, even in one year, has so much to say uh, 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 about, uh, uh, about, about uh, Mr. Giver. So, Honorable Luke, please. You might want to move. No, that's not working. Come to the side of the ruling party. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. On off your Luke, a tenant, and three bombs, so we'll be on federal constituency of Aquaibon State. Mr. Speaker, uh, um, immediately I was elected, I started having an agenda and plan on how I am going to operate within the National Assembly. And having been in the Assembly at the state level, I understood perfectly well the institutional memory of any legislature which lies with the clerk and the civil service. And uh, while we were here on introduction, I sought to know the clerk of the House of Representatives. And on that very day, um, we were at Transcorp to do a registration for the induction. And I found out that there were certain things about my name which were not correct. And behold, the man I approached to have asked how I would correct this was actually the clerk of the House of Representatives. He held me by the hand, just like a JJC arriving secondary school, 
and then took me to the desk and sought for the corrections to be made as it concerns my name and my bio data. Mr. Speaker, that was the beginning of my journey of a relationship with Mr. Giwa. I then had to learn how to navigate, to get bills, motions, enrolled, um, slated for hearing. And then he sat down and took me on a personal course, a relationship that would later translate into a family relationship, sir. So today, I'm saying all this to buttress the fact that Mr. Giwa is a tested administrator. Within the few months, a year and some months that I've had opportunity to serve my people in this house, I've had cause to run to him so many times to help me point to people that could help fine-tune my bills, fine-tune my motion, and then help me. Uh, I remember a particular day here when I brought a matter under privilege. And then he called me and said, those matters should not be under privilege because any matter on privilege would be referred to ethics and privileges committee. This is how you ought to have come with that issue. And that shows a mentor in him. So today we thank God first that it is not his coffin that we are speaking to. We thank God that we are speaking to him live and he's seated here. We return glory to God Almighty who has given him the strength, the energy, the mental capacity finish well. to finish well and end well and learn well. My prayer and that of my constituency is that may God continue to strengthen him and may God continue to give him strength. Just like um, the minority leader and uh, I mean the majority, the leader, the house leader and the minority leader has said, this is a man that we believe that Nigeria should give him more responsibility to save in other quarters when we are looking and are asking for men of integrity. So to Mr. Gita, Honorable members, can you please come back and take your seats? Honorable members, Honorable Kuye, can you guys please come back and take your seats? We're doing a validity session for the clerk of the house. Please. So, uh, um, in conclusion, sir, to Mr. Giwa, thank you for leading us the way we should go. And thank you again. I know what it means for the leadership and the presiding officer to succeed. It takes a straightforward, it takes a tested and trusted clerk for the presiding officers and the leadership to succeed. Because if they do what they do within the political sphere, as an accounting officer, if you don't provide that basics, no matter what they do, for the good welfare that Mr. Speaker and the leadership has done for the members of the House, I believe that it is by your support because you are the chief accounting officer of this place. So we want to thank God for your life and thank you for what you have done. And we ask as you retire, may God strengthen you. As your days be, so shall your strength be. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, honorable colleagues. I do. Thank you, honorable Luke. I am aware that there's a lot of pressing matters, I, and I and appreciate it, you know, because of the budget process. But let's just tarry a little while. So a few more minutes, just to call a couple of members, and we'll be done with this. Um, Honorable Jimo. Honorable Speaker. My name is Jim Abdurrahim Olajide. I represent Lagos Mainland, Federal Constituency, Lagos State. I'm glad, I'm happy that I'm one of those that are sitting down here today to celebrate and congratulate somebody I consider as a man of value. A man that has served diligently to this house and to civil service generally. A man sitting down before all of us now. In the next few minutes or days, we'll be out of this place. Not by death, but by life. A man that has served as clerk former clerk of Public Accounts Committee, a man that has served 
as deputy clerk of this house. The man that is sitting down here is still serving as the clerk of this house. A seasoned administrator. A man from Edo. A man that can be regarded as somebody mm -hmm. who has committed himself to the service of humanity. A man that can assist at any point in time and advise accordingly. This is how to do it. This is how to go about it. Do it this way, you get the result. I want to say that this is what one we expect. Somebody who is very calm and cool I have the intelligence to achieve a man who has remarkably achieved success as far as civil service is concerned. Mr. Giwa is before us today. He has trained so many number of people. I remember when, when I, one of my children wanted to serve here, I went to him. And he told me, ah, Honorable, you should have called me. I said, ah, I don't need to call you. Please put me the right way. And he did. I thank you and I thank God for your life. I congratulate you. I congratulate your family. A four star general has spoken. I am one star general. When I say four star general, I mean the majority leader. No, you have four wives and so many children. We have one wife and one children. You are, I mean, one wife and so four children. You also have one wife and many children. We thank God that we are safe, unlike him, that is four, gen four star general. But for you that you have succeeded in your life, it's glorious to Almighty God. It's thankful to Almighty God. It's to you to appreciate God more while you are living. But don't think you are living here because you are retired. But you are not tired. You can be called upon at any point in time to assist or be a consultant. I say God bless you and thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Duku. Still not working. Right, Honorable Speaker, my highly respected colleagues, I'm Honorable Aisha Tijibrul Duku, Jimbiar Duku, member representing Dukuna for the federal constituency. I come from Gombe State. Mr. Speaker, thank you for giving me this opportunity to say a word about our outgoing clerk. When I first came in, I met him on the selection committee. Then I was the chair for the not the selection committee. And as a novice, I relied so much on his, you know, experience and knowledge. And I saw how calm he was and patient with me for asking too many questions. And uh, I'm happy to say that he has been a mentor to so many of us. And these characteristics, I know, is what has kept him on, you know, assembly after assembly. I would like to salute his wife because beside every successful man, there is a woman. Madam, thank you for being patient because I know he stays in this office up to late hours before he goes back home and you were able to, you know, stay put and take care of the home front. And I see the beautiful children that Allah has blessed you with. May your days be long, in good health and prosperity. May Nigeria and Nigerians continue to benefit from your experiences. Thank you and may God bless. colleagues, I think um, we had our way everybody will speak here today because everybody has one thing or the other to say. Um, we'll just give Prof an opportunity and Chairman and Business and Rules who's worked closely with the clerk 
and then we can wrap up. Mm. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, Professor Julius C. Hoveri, representing the good people of Owa Federal Constituency, Edo State. Um, when the minority leader was speaking, he was quite happy to claim Mr. Giwa for the Niger Delta. Today, I am going to claim him for the very beautiful, calm, peaceful, productive community of Uzeba in Iuleha clan, on one West local government, Edo State, where I come from. Most People do not know that Mr. Giwa and I are brothers. And the way we work is to say that should not be the defining factor of why you are here. We come from the same town, we're from the same family, the same community. So I will tell you how we see Giwa at home. From the way he has operated here, it is clear that there are certain qualities that is brought here. I want to say today, Mr. Speaker, today is one of my finest hours. I'm happy, I'm proud, I'm elated that he has served with a clean slate. Most people don't know I'm related to him, and we talk about him, and they talk freely. I have not met one person who has had one negative thing to say about Mr. Giwa. But let me give credit to, at three levels, one, to thank God for his life, that he didn't derail from his imbued quality. He didn't allow the arrogance of power or the environment of work to change his person. Second, let me thank his wife. Many times I call him at 8, 9 p.m., he's still at work. And as a, a family, person, we all know what that means. So I want to thank you, Egayoma. We appreciate you. May God continue to bless you. And I want to thank his colleagues, the deputy clerks, the others who worked with him in the office, because they made his body a lot easier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me round up by saying that um, in the history of men, you are bound to meet obstacles, opportunities, and challenges. If you do not have that inner spirit of discipline, of focus, of righteousness, the capacity to differentiate between what is good and what is bad, an understanding of history, and the ability to distinguish those who come to you because of what you are as a person and those who come to you because of your office, you make mistakes. Mr. Giwa has a sense of history, a sense of nation, and that is the most important thing. The message he gave to me when I came here around of Mr. Speaker, in this house, there is no party difference. I even got to know that before I saw the joint task. He said, work with your colleagues. Two, you will benefit more when you move outside your Edo State colleagues to non-Edo colleagues. Three, make no enemies here. If you offend somebody, apologize. If they offend you, he also told me to apologize. And I followed this principle since I got here. And I believe I'm doing the best for myself. May God continue to guide you. We're waiting for you at home. To, in fact, we don't have a king in the community now. He died long ago. I know because I'm the prime minister next to the king. We may just make you our next king. And uh, so there are jobs waiting everywhere. But I thank everyone here for working with my brother, for giving him courage, giving him hope, and give, uh, protecting him with your prayers. May God bless us all. Thank you, sir. Okay, can we do one? Thank you very much, Prof. Can we do one minute each for Honorable Toby and then the uh, Chairman of Business and Rules? Okay, go ahead. Please. Because we need to cover at least two items on the 
other paper before we leave. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Toby Okechibu, and I represent an area of Wojir River Federal Constituency from Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased that you consider that I should talk about a man who have served this institution creditably well. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, Mr. Giwa, as at the time he was not the clerk, had always maintained his prudence, his integrity, and I've had cause to work with him in the Eighth Assembly when he was responsible to coordinate selection uh, of members to committees. The same integrity he maintained then is the same he maintains today. But I also had the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, when you assigned us to develop a guideline for our resumption, I worked closely with him, the COVID guidelines. He went an extra mile, working with others to develop additional protocols to enable the House of Representatives to resume during COVID. So he's not only creative, he's minded vigorously and in a dedicated manner to his job. So I would believe that other than the general ordinary services, during that time of emergency, he was responsive and he was very responsible. And that may have been, we were the only first institution that resumed, adding additional protocols to the protocols of NCDC. And it is to his credit that we had such exposure to the pandemic. But to God's will and to the effort they put, we've not recorded any fatality associated with that in this assembly. So that goes to the level of work he has done for us. No matter if we had lost any life due to carelessness or lack of it, I would say that the management didn't do as much. So, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, so we want to thank you for the job you've done for the institution, for the job you've done for our colleagues, and the job you've done for the country. Even if you've had so many offers for an additional wife, I know you'll be reluctant to take it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll pull out our chairman business and rules. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues. I am Abubakar Sanfulata. I represent Briwa, Krika Sama, Budi Federal Consent Speaker from Jigao State. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, to quote from Marx, men make their own history, but not according to their choice. They do so in accordance with circumstances created and dictated by others. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Giwa succeeded because the institution of National Assembly and all the members here present created the enabling environment for him to succeed. For the few time or one and a half years that I have interacted closely with Mr. Giwa, I have found him to be a civil servant to the core. For Mr. Giwa, the language of no does not exist. He tries to make his point patiently and with a lot of respect. 
even for those who are under him. On many occasions, he was not the one responsible for a fault. It is either the fault of someone above him or those below him. But all the same, he takes responsibility. It is up to you, the one who is interacting with him, to understand that the problem is not from him. It's from his subordinate. And all along, he will assure you that, yes, it will be done. It will be done. It will be done. He has no negatives. And that is why he succeeded. He doesn't talk down on his genius. And he tries to protect those above him. Segiwa, indeed, Bihau will miss you. We will miss, we'll miss your good counsels. We will miss your leadership. I will miss your dedication to service. May God Almighty guide you, protect you, and wish you succeed in whatever that you decide to do outside the civil service. And as said by the leader of the house, your services will still be required by this house whenever the need arises. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, honorable colleagues. Uh, let me just say, at the risk of sounding repetitive, add a little to the wonderful things that have been said about our outgoing clerk. First of all, it's important for people to understand what it means by being the clerk of the House of Representatives. It's easy to just say clerk without understanding the full, the duties, the functions, and what it takes to be a clerk. As a clerk, Mr. Gill has been in charge of the administration of this institution. He's been in charge of its finances. He's been the chief accounting officer. He's been in charge of its security. He's been in charge of as was rightly said by Honorable, the COVID pandemic. Basically, as a clerk, you're in charge of everything. You are more or less numero uno. And in working with Mr. Giwa, I have found him to be a clerk par excellence. Mr. Patrick Giwa rose through the ranks from being a committee clerk the deputy clerk and to the clerk of the House of Representatives. I found him to be a man that is, his commitment to duty is unparalleled. A man of integrity who is beyond reproach. He's a quiet, amiable, and gentle man, like everybody has said but more importantly, a reliable ally, not just to me, but to every single member, 360 members here. He has not, I don't think anybody has any ill wind or anything to say negative about the outgoing clerk of the house, Mr. Patrick Giwa. Our friend, our brother, uh, Clark. He has become a legislator, not by election, but by experience and training. As has been attested to, many of us have run to him to understand certain nuances of legislative work. I personally have had occasions to debate with him, much to my chagrin and irritation, on certain aspects of the rules. 
Sometimes you see us discussing here. A couple of times I've had to snap when I try to interpret the rule in a certain way and he tries to interpret the rule in a different way. I snap not because he was wrong, because I realized that he was right. That is the person of Mr. Giwa. He has become the custodian of our rules. I do not know that I have seen in my years not just as the speaker or leader of the house, but even before then, I do not know, and I may be wrong, but if I can even have doubts in my head that I do not think I have seen him absent from this seat once, I think I may be right. I do not remember seeing him absent from this seat once. And that is a testament to his level of commitment and dedication to the job that he accepted to do. We wish you well, Mr. Patrick Giwa, as you continue in your sojourn outside of the house. Whilst we are, and the irony of life is that whilst we are unhappy to see you go, your immediate family is elated and happy to take you back because we know you've been away from them because this work is not a nine to five job this is a 24 7 job seven days a week you and i and i'm sure several members talk on sundays you and i meet on sundays so there's no rest and that's why I know that your family is excited to have you back. And at this point, I think it's important, at least for my own sanity, to find out and identify who your wife is. And if the wife is there, can she please rise so that we can appreciate you for what you have done. Thank you very much. We do that in recognition of the fact that without you, there could not have been a Patrick Giwa in terms of what he has done for this institution. So I thank you for your support of him. And I pray that you continue you know, to, to support him even outside of office. I ask that you please ignore some of us members who spoke earlier and um, tried to incite your wrath. I saw that even the visor in your face lifted automatically when the house leader was speaking. But I can assure you that he is not just the house leader or the majority leader of this institution. He's also the house jester and clown. So don't take it serious. He was only playing or messing with you. Go well, Mr. Giwa. And remember that you are an ambassador of this institution. I worry and I feel very seriously for your clerk or the, the incoming clerk because he has massive shoes to fill. Even though in his own case too, I do not believe he will be found wanting. The kind of person Mr. Giwa is, I remember when we were trying to, I was trying to narrow down as to who do we, who succeeds him. There are several candidates, I sat with him, and in his typical fashion, he was fair to all. That is who he is, and we thank God for him. So go well, and God bless you.
I now invite the new, our uh, new clerk, is to take the seats of the club. What do I do now? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll just testing. Testing, testing. All right. Thank you. Colleagues, um, please let me crave your indulgence. We're just going to go straight to, we didn't envisage uh, the validation session. We're going to go straight to two items that are very important, and um, we're going to call it a day. Well, three maybe, because the Deputy Chief, we've, we're going to make this for one minute, Deputy Chief. Uh, she came in late because she had gone to represent me somewhere. And um, today is the international. Go ahead, go ahead and move your. Yeah, go ahead. Today. When today? Today when? When to be this one? What happened? Kiru Kaunye Jocha, the presenting squad to Munu Federal Constituency, matter of urgent public importance, International Day for the Elimination uh, of... Um, Deputy, can you ask for the leave of the House to suspend our rules so that you can go back to that because we're way beyond matter of urgent public importance? Okay, sir. My move that... Uh, I seek for the uh, leave of the house for suspension of this rule, rule, order eight, rule four, three, matter of urgent public importance, and for suspension of uh, relevant to enable me to take this matter as matter of no, urgent public importance. I, I so move this speaker. All right. Those in support, please say, well, a seconder, Honorable Jimo, you want a second? Yeah, let me second. Thank you very much. I will listen to what she has just said. I therefore move that I second the motion as moved. Thank you. Those in support, please say, aye. Those against, please say, aye. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Honorable Colleagues. International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. The House notes that November 25th of every year is designated International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. The United Nations system together with United Nations women is joining hand with victims, activists, decision makers, and people from all walks of life to beam light on the need to proper funding of essential agencies for the prevention of data collection of violence against women. They held further note that this year's theme 
for the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women is tagged. Orange for Orange the World, Fund, Respond, Prevent, Collect. Like in previous years, this year's International Day will mark the launch of 16 days of activity, activism that will conclude the, on 10th December 2020, which is International Human Rights Day. The House recalled that women play, played a crucial role in the achievement and initiation of additional commitments and the mobilization of member states on the issue of ending violence against women. The House is aware that the official commemoration of the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women will be a virtual multi-stakeholders event due to the current context of COVID-19 pandemic and in line with the social gathering engagement strategy and gender-based violence. And Nigerian Parliament is joining their voices today to commemorate that day, this day. The House is further aware that it is also a day to honor women's organizations as first responders and to acknowledge their leadership roles in ending, to acknowledge their leadership role in ending violence and activate United Nations wide mobilization under the umbrella of the 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence campaign for the promotion of zero tolerance across all spheres of society, including Nigeria. The House is worried that the violence against women and girls is one of the most widespread, persistent, and devastating human rights violations in our world today. It is slightly unreported due to the impunity, silence, and stigma and shame surrounding it. The house is further worried that it manifests itself in physical, sexual, and psychological forms, which includes intimate partner violence, battering, psychological abuse, marital rape, femicide, sexual violence and harassment, rape, forced sexual assault, unwarranted sexual advances, child sexual abuse, forced marriages, street harassment, stalking, cyber harassment, human trafficking, slavery, sexual exploitation, female genital mutilation, and child marriage. The House believes that in commemoration of this year's International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, there is an urgent need to call on government and relevant stakeholders to develop action plans to gender responsive investment to expand basic public education, infrastructure, health care and security in rural areas. The House resolved to urge the federal, state and local government to galvanize actions to support the elimination of violence against women. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Luga, second. Right, Honorable Speaker. Respected colleague, my name is Representative Taiwo Luga. I speak for the people of Rural Wally Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Washington State. I second the motion I so moved by uh, my leader. I so second. Okay, let's just put the question. Those in support, motion by Honorable Kiruka, please say aye. Those in against, please say nay. Aye, Zabe. We're going to move straight to the first order of the day. First order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of a bill for an act to authorize issue from the Federal Capital Territory Administration Statutory Re Revenue Fund of the Federal Capital Territory 
administration account the total sum of one hundred and eighty nine billion five hundred and twelve million ninety four thousand one hundred naira only of which the sum of seventy one billion eight hundred and ninety eight million four hundred and sixty nine thousand three hundred and forty nine naira only is for personnel costs and the sum of fifty five billion six hundred and ninety one million three hundred and nineteen thousand seven hundred and eighty eight naira only is for overhead cost while the balance of sixty one billion nine hundred and twenty two million three hundred and forty three hundred and four thousand nine hundred and ninety eight naira only is for capital projects for the service of the federal capital territory abuja for the financial year commencing the first january and ending 31st december 2020 standing in the name of the house leader honorable members will recall that the bill was read the first time on tuesday 24th november 2020 and i'll invite the leader to move that the bill be read a second time leader Uh, thank you once again, right honorable speaker, uh, honorable members. Ado Dogwa is my name. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I represent the good people of Dogwa to Dungwada Federal Constituency. Honorable members, I am from Kano State. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise to perform the normal ritual here, sir, that a bill for an act to authorize the issue from the Federal Capital Territory Administration Statutory Revenue Fund of the Federal Capital Territory Administration account, the total sum of 189 billion 512 million 94,100 naira only, of which the sum of 71,898,469,100 billion million naira only is for personnel cost and the sum of 55,691,319,700 billion million naira only is for our head cost while the balance of 661 billion 922 billion 304,998 naira only is for capital projects. For the service of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, for the financial year commencing from 1st of January and ending on 31st December 2020, HB 110, 1102. Uh, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I so move. The Minority Leader, the second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Honorable Daniel Melu, and I represent the good people of Anoto in the federal constituency. I'm from Delta State. I rise to second the motion moved by the House Leader. I so second. <laughs> leader, it's finished. Straightforward. 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Mr. Speaker, uh, honorable members, I just needed to do the synopsis just in one or two minutes, sir, uh, which is quite usual. Mr. Speaker, while I appreciate the benevolence of the honorable members on the floor, especially the opposition who are saying carry go, I still would like to do the righteousness of the presentation of a bill of this nature being an act of appropriation. Uh, you know, Mr. Speaker, the leader, the minority leader of the House can be so benevolent, but if it gets out of procedure, he will be the first, the first person to blow whistle that this one is going the other way around. So let us do the right thing. You are a very righteous speaker, under a very righteous government, but led by an able president, President Muhammad Buhari, and will not give any room for any corruption of any sort, whether procedural or financial corruption. Okay. Mr. Speaker, 15 more seconds. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is a financial document. It is an appropriation act 
is a bill that is presented before this honorable house uh, mr speaker simply to secure 1.02 uh i've been come from the background of a pandemic covid 19 pandemic the statutory appropriation act of 2020 as it regards the federal capital territory mr speaker did not envisage naturally the ravages the challenges the problems that that has been encapsulated in the COVID-19 pandemic, to which we are still uh, uh, facing. And in that regard, Mr. Speaker, they now brought Pashuan to the provisions of relevant constitutional provisions in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that this act be revised so that some of those things that were not foreseen now be, can now be addressed and be captured in this new, uh, uh, new bill. So in, on that note, Mr. Speaker, it is my hope that members will look at this natural development, this natural pandemic, this natural phenomenon that has touched the economy of virtually every state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and remind them that this house being the state assembly, so exercising the role of like a state assembly to the Federal Capital Territory Authority will do justice to this piece of legislation and allow this uh, legislation pass, this appropriation act passed so that the FCDA and the Federal Capital Territory Authority will be uh, will have an ability to go ahead and do what they expect, what they expected to do. Uh, this is the seat of power. This is the window to Nigeria, apart from Lagos, which of course is the more window in terms of commerce. But when you are talking about misfortune, this place is a very important place for us, and we need to provide for them necessary infrastructure, financial and otherwise, to be able to discharge their responsibility as seat of power and the federal capital territory to which all of us are proud of. Thank you, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Leader. Those in favor, please say aye. Amendment, sir. Those in get... Amendment? Uh, to, a, to, a, to a bill? Yeah. Just, 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 uh, is it the You want to amend the figures? No, sir. There was a typographical error that needed to be corrected. Uh, no, because we can't amend bills. We amend motions. Uh, that was a clerical. Uh, what's the amendment? The clerical error is what? Yes, sir. What? Uh, instead of 2021, it was uh, written to be 2020, sir. Oh, okay. Yes. Please take notes. Okay, I'm not even. Sir, Mr. Speaker, uh, my respected colleague from the rear, uh, don't mislead the house, please. This is precisely 2020 Appropriation Act. It is simply brought for a revision. And you can see the reason why I insisted, even when the opposition are giving us carry go, I insisted I need to make this explanation. The revision of the 2020? It's a revision of the 2020 budget. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker Leader, think, two of Mr. us Mr. cannot Speaker, be on our feet. Point of order, please. Uh, no, but you have not been recognized now. But, but I'm raising a point of order. order and, and, uh, after you raise a point of order, I will recognize you. Order, you don't raise a point of order and stand up. Doesn't work like that. Are you are you done, House Leader? No, I can't be done because well, I need to once they are done, I will take his point of order. Yes. So the please, yes. please, please, honourable leader, please, honourable member, uh, make sure I uh, look at the size of your shoe and look at my own. <laughs> okay. I, 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 are you done? Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Go ahead. Mr. Speaker, it's just a mere clarification that I will give. I would like to give to the House and to the Honourable Member who may be out of uh, oversight. Thought that this is a 2021 a revision. Yeah, it's just a revision. We are reviewing the 2020 Appropriation Act. Thank now you. Now encapsulate within the content of the budget Thank things you. that have not been envisaged before the COVID-19. Thank you, Minority Leader. Do you still have a point of order? What's your point of order? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Order 6, Rule 2. <laughs> it's privilege that any time a member raises a point of order, order privilege, it must be taken. Yeah, what's your point of order? Very good. Mr. Speaker, when the House leader was speaking, he alluded to the fact that we said carry go. There was never a time that us here mentioned the issue of Caribou. However, we were concerned about time, given that even this budget that you are talking about had been appropriated before and it was never implemented. Yeah. 
It was never implemented. So why waste time again on the issue and of why we have many other things in the other paper that we should even attend to? And in any case, it's an issue of going for second reading, which in effect means to yeah. commit it to, to the committee for yes. them to dissect it, re-engineer re it, and bring it before us. They will not have time to consider the it. The point of order is sustained, my don't you But sustained, sustained. Honorable um, colleagues, uh, Honorable, Honorable Muraino, uh, Chairman, Public Petition, uh, a couple of others, please bear with us. The Deputy Speaker and I have a very important official engagement that we have to attend. Uh, we're running a little bit behind time. So I'm going to go straight to the 12th order of the day. The 12th order of the day is consideration of report of the Committee on AIDS, Loan and Debts and Management on the Promissory Notes Program and Bond Issuance as Refunds to Rivers, Bayelsa, Cross River, Oshu and Ondo States, State Governments for projects executed on behalf of the Federal Government. Honourable Members will recall that the report was laid on Tuesday, 24th November 2020. Honourable Safana will move for its consideration. Mr. Speaker, are you sure we allow Safana to speak? Mr. Speaker. Okay. Um, I need to speak. Yes. We thank God for the new clerk. Mr. We did Speaker. not um, put the question on the on the uh, FCT bill because of the banter between the House leader and the minority leader. So uh, put the question on the FCT bill. Those who support me say aye. Who's against me say nay. Ayes have it. Long time. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to authorize the issue from the Federal Capital Territory Administration Statutory Revenue Fund of the Federal Capital Territory Administration account, the total sum of $189,512,094,100 only, of which the sum of Seventy-one billion, eight hundred and ninety-eight million, four hundred and sixty-nine thousand, three hundred and fourteen naira only, is for personnel costs, and the sum of fifty-five billion, six hundred and ninety-one million, three hundred and nineteen thousand, seven hundred and eighty-eight naira only, is for overhead costs, while the balance of sixty-one billion. Nine hundred and twenty two million three hundred and four thousand nine hundred and ninety eight naira only is for capital projects for the service of the Federal Capital Territory Abuja for the financial year commencing from one January and ending on thirty one December twenty twenty. Second reading. Okay. Um Matter pa uh, passed to the committee on uh, FCT. Mr. Uh, Fanan, please move for consideration. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, my respected colleagues. I hereby move that the House do consider the report of the Committee on AIDS Loan and Debt Management on the Promissory Notes Program and Bond Issuance as a refund to rivers by Elsa, Cross River, Osun, and on those states government for projects executed on behalf of the federal government and approve the recommendation therein. I so move. Yes, seconder, please, Manager. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain honorable to the God in this middle. And I represent the good people of our church with the federal constituency and from Delta State. I rise to second that will consider the report from Loans and Debt, Man Debt Management Committee as moved by the House Committee Chairman on Loans, Aids, and Debt Management. I so second.
Okay, so uh, those in support, please say aye. It's against me, say nay. I have it. Move that the House resolve to the Committee of Hold to consider the report. Uh, right Honourable Speaker, sir. Honourable Members, I rise to move that the House do, do convene to the Committee of the, the Committee of Supply to consider the report, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Members, I so move. Honourable Savana, approach the leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Honourable Deputy Godwin Elmelu, and I remain. And I represent the good people of Anyo Church in the Federal Conference. I'm from Delta State. I rise to second the motion moved by the House leader that we do consider the report of the House Committee on AIDS, Loan and Debt Management on repayment of uh, requests made by Bayesa, Cross River, Undo, or Show Rivers. I so second. Those is the public say aye. This is to say nay. I have it. I'll see about results of the of supply. Hello, Safana. Please, quick uh, synopsis. It's just a summary, just three lines. Okay. Don't read. Uh, just three lines, three, four lines. Summary, summary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues. The report is about uh, reforms that the federal government intend doing to states that executed projects on behalf of it. The total amount is 148 billion. <coughs> Mara, sorry. And the reform is going to be made through the uh, issuance of promissory notes and bonds to the state government. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Safara. So we'll go straight to the recommendations. Oh, okay. 
Ahí yo tengo más de... Okay, so that the House uh, do approve the promissory note program and bond insurance to settle outstanding claims and liabilities of the five states in the sum of 148,141,969,161 naira 24 kobo only based on the claims by each state as follows. Bayelsa. 38 billion 404 million 564 783.40 carried 18 billion 394 million 732 608.65 7 billion 600 and sorry 822 147 577.08 carried Four billion five six seven four five six six seven three point six three. Carried. River State. Seven seventy eight nine five three zero six seven five one eight point two nine. Carried. Is one hundred and forty eight billion one hundred and forty one. 148 billion, yes. 141,969,161 naira 24 cover only. Got it. Did that? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, honorable members. Uh, Mr. Speaker, p permit me to, on a very serious note, note, make an observation at this point. Even while we have carried all that we are supposed to carry, Mr. Speaker, I think it's a point of duty upon myself to make it known that this is part of the benevolence and the national commitment of this government as a, as a, as a, as a government. Sir. The ruling APC government, you can see before, before you a profile of over five to six PDP governments taking monies from the center here to go, of course, to develop their state, which, of course, is a, is a national development. We'll have no problem about that. But I must put it on, on record that governors taking benefit from the coffers of the government in the center here must make it known to their constituents in the state that this is a reimbursement from the central government to the sub-nationals. It's a very serious matter because some governors have not been very economical with the truth when they take away this kind of funds from the central government. We will continue to do that because this is one government and it's one nation but the credit must be given to who the credit is due. Thank you, and God bless the federal public of Nigeria. Yes. Yes, sir. Mr. Speaker. Yes, sir. Mr. Speaker. 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 One house, please. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker brief. I move that the house revert to plenary, please. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name remains Honorable Didi Godwin Elwelu, and I represent the good people of Anyocho Shibliferia Consensi. I'm from Delta State. Mr. Speaker, um, the House leader, while we were in Committee of Supply, uh, made some submissions as to the fact that we are taking money from centre to the state. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me put it on record that what the states did the five states, I don't want to narrow down to PDP states. The five states were magnanimous enough to repair, repair federal roads. And that resulted in what we are now doing. As at that time they did it, federal government did not have the money to rehabilitate such roads. It's even happening in Lagos. Your governor did the same thing in Lagos state. So when your governor does it, and he asked for reform, 
should not be mistaken to me. I, I, I think you are right, Honorable Olumelu. I think you are right. They, they did the federal government. But I think what uh, the House leader was, uh, w what came to his mind, and you cannot pretend to forget, is that uh, years ago, if you remember, during the PDP uh, government, even certain local government funds were seized by the center. In spite of court's ruling that they should uh, be released, some states suffered that problem. Um, so he's just trying to draw a comparison between um, what this government is doing and what happened in the past. Later. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I rise to move that this, the report from the Committee of the Supply be adopted, Mr. Speaker. I so move. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me first of all read the report. The House in the Committee of Supply consider the report of the Committee on AIDS, Loans and Debt Management on the promissory notes program and bond issuers as refund to Rivers, Bielsa, Cross River, Osu and Ondo State Government for projects executed on behalf of the federal government and approved the recommendations Therein, so we can move for the uh, uh, adoption. Uh, thank you, right, honourable speaker, honourable members. Ado Dogwa is my name, Mr. Speaker. I represent Dogwa to the Wada federal constituency. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am the leader of the ninth house of representatives. Elumelu, the minority leader of this house. Inkiruka, deputy chief whip. And my big brother here is the deputy speaker, and you are the able speaker that steers the ship of this house. Mr. Speaker, all other ones observe, please. <laughs> all other protocol, please, respectively observe. All others, please, respectively observe. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I rise to move that the report of the Committee of the Whole, as read by the Honorable Speaker in the Chair, be adopted. Leader, I think you should try as best as possible to always cut him some slack. We understand, you know, you're in you're the ruling party, the engine room of this uh, house, the leader of the house. But every like now and then, just give them a break. The nucleus. You know, I know they didn't give us a break when the coin was flipped, but let's give them a break. Uh, minority leader, do you want to second the adoption of the monies we're giving to your states? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you failed to also acknowledge. The speaker failed. Sorry, it's not Hold on. Speaker. Okay. No, the speaker failed. Change that one. Oh. Right Which right one do you want? Which? The speaker has not failed anyway. No, 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 no. He has not failed. Please, you can request that. House leader, house leader. Take it back. Mr. Speaker, am I protected? No, you can't be. Protected. You are no, you are protected. You are protected. Exactly. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, what I'm trying to say is that it's you okay. also did not remember that even a PDP person did a power probe and recommended that money owed Lagos State on power installation be paid. It was in the recommendation of the power report. So it was not an issue of PDP per se. It was an issue of an individual. Okay. Thank you very much. One of your governors recently joined the ABC. Was, was that? Ebony, <laughs> uh, uh, I think, right? Uh, okay. I just remembered now. <laughs> leader, you remember that? That the Ebony governor joined the ABC? House leader? Yeah, yeah, just recently. Wonderful guy. Uh, you can go ahead and second the motion, please. Delta is coming. Mr. Speaker, oh my goodness! I remain on a wound to the God with Elumelu, and I represent the good people of Anyo Church with the Federal You know the beauty of this thing. The beauty. Point of order. Second the motion. <laughs> okay, um, they said the minority will have their say, and you can take your way. So I am speaking. I rise to second the motion that the money that the states duly, 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 duly 
spent without interest. Without interest. Why are you confused? I saw second. <laughs> yes. Mr. Speaker and Speaker colleagues, I think joke apart. You still have an opportunity for the house to vote. And so it is better for you as a position to keep in and lobby more than trying to justify. Otherwise, if the house negative the report, you know what will happen. I'm bringing that to your attention so that at least we should make progress. Very good Thank point. You so Thank you, sir. Uh, but they're, sep they're separate money. We could have separated them. Those in favor of say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Oh, they, we have an announcement. Sorry. A very sad one. With great sadness, we announce the loss of Mr. Mansion Dandy Chris, a dedicated staff of the Rules and Business Committee, House of Representatives. He passed away on Tuesday, 17th November 2020, after a brief illness. He has been a valued staff of the committee and will be greatly missed. Signed by Honorable Abubakar Hassan Fulata, Chairman, Rules and Business. We will stand up for a minute, silence, please. May you still rest in peace. Leader, please move for adjournment. Okay, sir. Uh, right, honorable speaker, honorable members. Of course, on a sad note, uh, having had the announcement of the demise of one of our own, Mr. Speaker, I move that this house do I so move. Thank you. Um, I'm right now. Second, I know you had something on, on the other paper today. I'm sorry about that. We'll, we'll take it on Tuesday. Thank you, our right honorable speaker, my honorable colleagues. I am Honorable Dr. Ajibola Muraino. I represent Barapa Central, Barapa North, Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, my Honorable colleagues, I'm from Mario State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion adjourning the House till Tuesday next week as moved by the Leader of the House. I so second, sir. Thank you. The motion is that the House be adjourned to Tuesday to allow all committees to finish the presentation of the, to finish the budget process. Those who support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it.